Hey guys, how are you today? In today's video, we are going to be taking you through our time in Chiang Mai City in Northern Thailand. We've been here for about two weeks and we are excited to show you the variety of places that we visited during this period. From its famous and super unique temples to ancient houses and some lesser known spots. So sit back, relax and enjoy our experience through Chiang Mai. also seeing a lot of fireworks on display as the locals are gearing up for the lantern festival and also there are just lanterns everywhere all shapes and sizes you can see around this market so just around this Chinatown market area is also this fruit market and there are just tons of these fresh fruits and some of these are tropical fruit that I haven't seen before so it's quite an interesting area to see and again a, a great way to kind of see the life of the locals how they are buying fruits and starting their morning early a street where people are buying lots of these lanterns or like flowers that you put in the river to light up and people are actually just stopping their cars and even buying like it's a drive through A wander through the streets of a Thai city wouldn't be complete without happening upon a shrine or two and you will certainly catch a glimpse of some exceptional examples in Chiang Mai's Chinatown. Founded in 1876, the Pang Tao Kong Shrine is a notable site and it's the oldest shrine in Chiang Mai. We have spent about half an hour walking around a portion of the market. It is actually lots of different markets that kind of intertwine together and there is such a variety of different things here. There's fruits, vegetables, meats, spices, dried fruit, uh, clothes, flowers, there's a huge variety here. And also it's not as touristy as the famous evening markets. So if you want to get a glimpse of the more non-touristy life, you could definitely come here in the morning. So right across the road from the market lies the Ping River. And a piece of history for you is that this river was the main way to get to Chiang Mai back in the days. The only other way to get here would be to ride on an elephant. Elephant rides used to be a very popular form of transport in the 1800s and early 1900s. So the river was the primary way of transport to get to Chiang Mai. And this was until 1921 when the railway was set up here. This river is where you'll see a lot of locals come down during different kinds of Thai festivals. This house behind me here is actually the oldest non-religious structure in Chiang Mai. It was built in 1867 and is built right on the Ping River which plays a very important role in Chiang Mai's history. So the Ping River behind me used to be an absolute hub of tea logging back in the late 1800s 
and what was amazing is they would have these huge logs of wood that they would then transport down the river all the way to Bangkok so what the teak companies like the Burma company or the Borneo company they would do is that they would stamp down on these logs and then they would send the logs down this river so it must have been an amazing sight to see in the 1800s to see the logs floating along the river. Something to make note of is you can rent a scooter here but you should have an international license so even if you don't you can still rent it but you will most likely get stopped by the cops and then if you get stopped it's actually a 500 baht fine you can then keep that slip for three days so for three days you kind of have a permit but uh, behind us right now they're literally stopping every single foreigner that comes on a bike so if you're willing to pay the fine then go for it or else apply for your international driver's license before So if you're keen to drive in Thailand, then check out our description box because in there you will find a link to a company that can help you get your uh, international driving permit. It takes two hours, it's done all online and it is valid in 150 countries. So it won't just be Thailand where you can use it and then that takes away the stress of worrying about getting stopped by police and then having to pay a fine. Behind me here is the moat that is outside the old city wall. So when the king built his old city, he wanted to protect his city from invaders. That is why he ordered the construction of this perimeter around the city. And just outside the wall, he constructed this moat. And although a lot of the city wall is not visible today, uh, the moat in its original form is still just around the old city area. The must-see spots to explore in Chiang Mai is definitely the old city. Long time ago the old city had a wall built around it but today not much of that wall is standing. There is some of it still behind me. There are bits along the old city where you can see parts of the wall and there are four gates that are original gates which you can enter to go into the old city as well. So once you cross the gate, you'll come across this beautiful street, which is the Taipei Walking Street. And this street is lined with a variety of beautiful cafes and restaurants. And during the day, you'll also see different kinds of markets selling Thai items and also a lot of souvenirs. On the weekend, this area transforms into this huge food market where they cordon off the road and you will see a variety of street foods. One thing you can do here that's quite different is you can get a Thai massage from some ex-inmates. It's a way of promoting them and giving them a life after they have been in and giving them a second chance. We then made our way to a small restaurant that has the reputation of having the best cow soy in Chiang Mai. Here you get your bowl of curry noodles and a side plate with the goodness of pickled mustard greens, chopped red onions, a wedge of lime and a petri dish of fragrantly roasted chili flakes. Do you make note that you need to be here slightly before opening time or you might have to queue up for a while. So up next we are going to go and check out some famous temples in Chiang Mai. Chiang Mai in fact has plenty of famous temples here but there were three temples that particularly appealed to us because they had a very distinctive style. So let's go and check how these temples are.
So behind us is the Wat Sri Supan Temple, which is also popularly known as the Silver Temple. Uh, this temple is 500 years old and it's probably the most unique temple we have visited. What makes it so unique is the entire temple is actually covered in handcrafted silver, hence the name the Silver Temple. It's not a very big compound, it's actually quite a small temple, but just the amount of detail on the facade is just yeah, quite amazing to see. Originally built in the 16th century, this temple has been rebuilt and renovated several times and today is a modern interpretation of traditional Lana design. The interior is adorned in intricate artwork, including depictions of Buddha's life and his 10 incarnations. Walking around the temple, we've seen at the bottom of the temple there's actually the names of different countries and something that represents them. So like Paris has the Eiffel Tower and Prague, Oslo, there's lots of different countries all the way around the whole temple which is quite an interesting aspect to add. And there's some modern things as well so I think those would have perhaps been added a little bit later on. Like in the corner there, over there, oh where am I pointing? There, there is Spider-Man and the Hulk. So obviously that wasn't from 500 years ago. After spending time at the Silver Temple, we made our way to the second temple of the day located nearby. You can see behind me there are hundreds of these beautiful lanterns being hung. So it's actually a celebration where they're preparing for the Lantern Festival. And if you want to join, you can buy a lantern here, write a message or a prayer, and then you get to participate and you get to hang your lantern. The Wat Pra Singh is one of the most revered temples in Chiang Mai. With a stupa covered in glistening gold, the temple was magnificent to look at. We must say, almost every temple we have visited in Thailand has been so clean and well maintained. Right now I'm standing in front of the Wat Chedi. This is actually a complex of a lot of different Buddhist temples but this is famously known for its enormous Chedi which is what is behind me and a Chedi is a Buddha shrine and this one is quite different because its facade is made of brick and it has elephants on it but on some of the sides the elephants have actually fallen off over time because this is from the 15th century so it is quite old but it's really nice to see something a bit different from the other ones that we've seen so far today. Something we've seen in quite a few of these complexes is some of the temples or shrines don't actually allow women in them. You can still stand outside and basically look in and see the whole shrine or temple anyway they just don't allow women to go in. An amazing opportunity that you will find around different temples in Chiang Mai is to interact with the Buddhist monks through the many monk chat programs. These are basically informal discussions where you sit around a table and talk with the young monks. They are a great way not only to be a part of a fun exchange culture, but also an opportunity in helping the young monks to get better at speaking English. Basically the canal we're walking around, it has been revamped um, to make it more tourist friendly. So it actually goes through a village. So although it's been made to be more kind of like a tourist place, you can still see the locals going about their evening life, doing their things. And also it's pretty quiet, so I think it's a very nice place to come during the evening and maybe spend an hour just strolling around while looking at the life of the locals.
there are tons of shops around us. Uh, some of them are selling these Thai handicrafts, which are pretty beautiful to see. And also you can see a lot of street food places. So the best time to come here would be in the evening, especially when these lamps light up the place, it just looks beautiful. And one thing to note is that the shops do start closing at around 9, so I would say get here around 5 or 6. I must say that we have thoroughly enjoyed seeing how everyone is in a festive mood. So it's just a Thursday night, but you can still see like a lot of people are out with their families, talking with their friends, having some food. Even the children are outside playing, which is really, really amazing for us to see. Okay, so that brings an end to our time here in Chiang Mai. And during our travels, we have had the opportunity to travel to quite a few different places. And we usually love to explore them and get to know them more but rarely do we come across places where we would like to set up for a year or a few years just for a longer term and to be honest Chiang Mai has turned out to be one such place. We've fallen in love with how beautiful it is but also how relaxed and slow paced it has turned out to be and at the same time it is very well suited for digital nomads like us and all the cafes and hotels and restaurants here provide fantastic places to live and work online from. There is a really nice community vibe here as well that you could tap into if you were here long term. And it's also really well situated. There are many places around Chiang Mai that you could visit for a weekend trip or even just a day trip. There's honestly so much to do here. The food is also amazing. The coffee is really amazing, which is very important. And also the markets are so big and colorful. You're surrounded by incredible nature and there's so many adventure activities. And last but not the least, the Thai people are probably the friendliest and most humble people we've come across. We've loved their hospitality and humble culture. And during our time here, we've also loved seeing their customs and festivals too. So much so that we have made a promise to ourselves that we will return to Chiang Mai in the future whenever we have the opportunity. So we would say, if you plan to visit Thailand, keep a week free in your itinerary to spend up here in the north. Spend a few days in Chiang Mai and you'll get to see a whole different side of Thailand. This brings an end to our Thailand series. We hope you've enjoyed watching it. We are now packing and getting ready to head to a different country. So please subscribe and stay tuned if you would like to travel with us in our future adventures. And do let us know where you are watching from. We would love to get to know you better.